Hi, my name is David Terra. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. Today's video is called Zero is Everything, and I'm going to explain why we need zero, why it's really important in, uh, in mathematics today, particularly in the way we do arithmetic. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to give you a brief uh, history of uh, num uh, numerals in Western culture, and um, all the ancient people used um, what are called face-valued systems of numerals without zero. Um, face value just means that every number had a different letter. Um, this, and uh, you can see that all the numbers 1 through 9 had a different Hebrew letter. And then uh, to make things a little easier, they went by tens and then by hundreds. And even using combinations of letters by the time you get to 900. Um, it's a very cumbersome system. But all the ancients used systems like that, the Greeks too. Greeks had uh, a little bit more symbols so they could get up to 9,000. And I'm sure you guys all know about Roman numerals. I'm sure you all learned them uh, at some point. They're still used today sometimes. But um, they're not very useful to work with in math. And just to give you an example, I'll uh, try, uh, I don't know if any, any of you guys ever tried multiplying with Roman numerals. They're really not easy. Let's try multiplying 16 by 12. So 16 in Roman numerals is XVI, 12 is XII, and um, I've actually never done this before, uh, but let me try it. So um, we distribute the numbers, XVI times I, that's easy, I is just one, so we just copy down XVI, but then we have another I here, so we have to do it twice. So we have another copy of XVI, now we have to multiply XVI by X, X is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, that's C. So we write a C over here. Um, 10 times uh, 50, 5 is going to be 50, that's an L. And then we're going to get X times I, which is X. Uh, so now that's uh, that's what we get, and we have to add all these guys. So now we get C, L, and we have three X's, so we write three X's, X, X, X. Now you'll notice that there are two V's, each V is a 5, so... 5 plus 5 gives you 10, that's another x. And now we've got two ones, that's i, i. And so that should be the answer. C is 100, L is 50, and then we got four tens, that's uh, 40, that gives you 90, 192, 192. That is the right answer. But as you can see, this is difficult. And if I use bigger numbers, it would be even more difficult. So Roman no numerals are not nice for doing arithmetic with. Uh, um, Anyway, I just thought I'd illustrate that. Um, but uh, things got a little better with the Babylonians. Uh, the next uh, thing was Babylonian numerals. Um, let's see if I can find. Yeah. So uh, the Babylonians actually had the first uh, what's called a, a place valued rather than a face valued system. And uh, um, so it was actually what's called a sexagesimal or base 60 um, system. And that seems like a really big base. But it wasn't too bad because they used two different symbols for ones and for tens. They sort of combined the idea with a, a face value and plates value. So these are all the symbols for all the numbers 1 through 59. And uh, that's that's a big step forward. And then what they did, if you want to write a really big number, you'd have to write, you know, uh, something times 60 plus something. And it kind of works like our decimal system except base 60 instead of base 10. The problem was they didn't have a symbol for zero. They just... Uh, um, didn't write down a symbol, and that could cause confusion sometimes. In case once the digits was zero, so uh, it really helps to have a zero. Um, that was a problem in the Babylonian system. And who was the first people to use zero? Turns out it was the Mayans. Uh, um, so there were. Um, this was in uh, South America, Central America. There was an ancient culture called the Mayan culture from about um, 8250 to about 8900. Unfortunately, they, they died out, and the people in the West never learned about them. They were only discovered later. But these guys actually did have a symbol for zero. It was a shell. And they had a base 20 system, which we call vagesimal, uh, and it worked pretty well. And you can kind of see how it works. It, it actually works a lot like our decimal system. So 28, you would write uh, 20 um, on the bottom, which was... Uh, um, um, uh, just a lot. Oh, no. It was a dot because 20 times 1. 1 is a dot, but you know, multiplying by 20. And then you add 8. Here's a symbol for 8 on the bottom. That's how we'd write 28. This is how you write 433. So uh, 
you write four, uh, one times 400 up here, one times 20 and 13, that gives you 433. Um, actually, the, the Mayans didn't really do it this way, unfortunately. This would have been nice if they'd kept a consistent base, but they didn't actually, they would use 360 instead of 400. They made their calendar easier to work with, and they mainly did this for their calendar. So they didn't turn out to be really great mathematicians either, although they did have a symbol for zero. And they're the first culture we know about that did that. Um, but now, of course, we know uh, what kind of numbers we use. We use a Hindu-Arabic numeral system. That's our current system. This is another um, place-value system, and it uses base 10. And I'm sure you're all familiar with it because this is the system that's used worldwide now. Um, took a while to catch on. It actually was invented in, um, in, um, uh, in um, the Arabic world, Islam. And these are the symbols they use. Those symbols look a little different. Um, they got adopted, and then the Indians used it a little bit later. Didn't actually uh, spread to Europe until until uh, um, around uh, 1200 AD. It was actually Fibonacci, um, same guy who invented Fibonacci numbers, who popularized the Hindu Arabic numeral system with this book called Libra Bacci, and explains how to do um, arithmetic that we all know today using the Hindu Arabic numeral system. So we have Fibonacci to thank for bringing it back to the West, but we haven't had it in the West. We've only had it since around 1200 AD, just a little over 800 years. Um, anyway, that's my uh, talk for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.